Hello, dear students, welcome to our program. Today, we are going to discuss the topic, role of ingredients used in bread making. The main objectives of the topic are, introduction and history of bread, characteristics of wheat flour for making bread, role of ingredients for bread making, methods for bread making, and finally, steps in bread making. Let's start by introduction and history of bread. Bread has played a key role in the development of mankind and is one of the principal sources of nutrition. Bread is one of the oldest prepared foods. Almost 30,000 years ago in Europe, the presence of starch residue on the rocks was found. Probably starch extract from the roots of the plants was spread on a flat rock and cooked into a primitive form of flat bread. Around 10,000 BC, with the dawn of agriculture, grains became the mainstay for making bread. Various sources were available for making bread. Airborne yeasts were harnessed by leaving uncooked dough exposed to air before cooking. The foam skimmed from bear was used to produce a lighter kind of bread. Parts of ancient world which consumed wine used a paste composed of juice and flour to initiate fermentation. Sometimes steeped wheat bran is used as a source of fermentation. In ancient times, most common source of leavening was to retain a piece of dough from the previous day to form sourdough. dough. The first commercial process was developed in 1961, which used the intense mechanical working of dough to reduce the period and the time taken to produce a loaf. This process requires high energy mixing and use of low protein grain and is now widely used around the world in large factories. As a result, bread can be produced very quickly and at low cost to the manufacturer and the consumer. Nutritionally, bread is known as good source of nutrition. Bread being made from whole grains is considered as a good source of nutrients such as carbohydrates, magnesium, iron, selenium, B vitamins and dietary fiber. As wheat is predominantly milled for bread making, the general term baking quality refers to the specific properties of flour required for the production of leavened bread. Bread is made by different procedures which depend upon many factors including tradition, cost, type of energy available, the type and consistency of the flour available. It also depends on the type of bread desired and the time between baking and eating. Doughs are usually baked, but in some cuisines, breads are steamed, for example, manto, fried, for example, in puri, or baked on an unoiled frying pan, for example, tortillas. Now, dear students, let's discuss the characteristics of wheat flour for bread making. Flour is the major ingredient of bread and is obtained through the milling process in which the bran and the germ part of the wheat grains are removed as far as possible. This is done to get the flour of desirable composition from the baking point of view. The major components of flour are moisture 14%, starch 70%, protein 11.5%, ash 4%, sugar 1% and fat 1%. The flour should have color, strength, tolerance, high absorption and uniformity with the following characteristics for the production of quality bread. These are first color. Flour should have a creamy white appearance without bran fragments otherwise the bread will have a dull white crumb. Bleaching of flour contributes towards the control of degree of creaminess. Second, strength. The flour is referred as strong or weak. For the production of quality bread, strong flours need a longer fermentation. Bread flour should have sufficient strength so that the dough made from it retains its shape during baking. The third, tolerance. The ability of flour to withstand the fermentation process and to produce a satisfactory loaf over the period of time is defined as tolerance. Fourth, high absorption. This refers to the ability of flour to hold the maximum amount of moisture without additional mixing for full development of dough. If the dough is not given the required mixing time because of limited mixing capacity or for other reasons, the baked product will lack volume and have a dry crumb with inferior eating and keeping qualities. Now let's discuss the role of ingredients for bread making. 
bread making ingredients are divided as essential and optional ingredients. First of all, we'll discuss essential ingredients. Ingredients which are must for making bread comes under this category. They are flour, water, yeast and salt. If any one of these ingredients is missing, the product is not bread. Optional ingredients, for example, sugar, fat, milk and milk products, oxidants, various enzyme preparations including malted grain, surfactants and additives to protect against the molds are considered as optional ingredients for bread making. Role of essential ingredients First being water. It's an essential ingredient as without water, dough cannot be prepared. Water has several functions in bread making. It is essential for the formulation of gluten. Gluten as such does not exist in flour. Only when flour proteins are hydrated, gluten is formed. Water helps in controlling the temperature of dough and its consistency. It helps in dissolving salts and suspends other non-flour materials uniformly in dough. Water wets and swells starch and is also required for activating enzymes. It makes the bread palatable. Water keeps the bread palatable longer if sufficient water is allowed to remain in the finished loaf. The water used should be fit to drink and free from contamination and disease-forming bacteria. Water being a powerful solvent has some dissolved minerals. These minerals have a beneficial effect on gas production as yeast requires them for vigorous gas production. Hard water which has high content of minerals should not be used as they have tightening effect on the gluten and retards fermentation. On the other hand, if soft water is used, then the gas production and gas retention of the dough is poor. Thus, medium hard water yields excellent results in the bread production. Second, yeast. Yeast is one of the fundamental ingredients. Its major function in bread making is to lighten the dough and to impart characteristic aroma and flavor. Yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, is a source of several enzymes like zymase, lipase, protease, invertase, maltase, etc. Yeast utilize fermentable sugars in the fermentation process to produce carbon dioxide gas through the action of enzymes. During fermentation process, alcohol, gas and some acids are also produced which help in mellowing gluten and easy stretchability. Third, salt. Salt is added to impart taste to the bread. Salt is used at 1-2% to level based on the flour weight. It also enhances the taste of the other ingredients and improves the flavor and characteristics of the bread. It has controlling effect on the activity of yeast and the rate of gas production. Salt also aids in preventing the formation and growth of undesirable bacteria in yeast-raised doughs. Salt makes the dough stronger and has tightening effect on the gluten proteins which improves the gas retention of the dough. The strengthening effect of the salt improves the grain and texture of the bread crumb. Sugar. It's used in bread production as nutrient for the yeast. It's the source of energy for yeast activity which produces carbon dioxide gas and is essential for imparting proper volume to the bread. It enhances the flavor of bread. It imparts golden brown color to the crust of bread. Next is fat. Fat is an important ingredient in bread making. Fat makes the bread soft and more palatable for longer period of time than the bread prepared without shortening. Besides anti-stalling properties, the added fat has a lubricating effect on gluten structure. It improves the softness and sliceability of bread. Fat should be added at the last stage of mixing as at earlier stage it adversely affects the water absorption power of the flour. The next is glycerol monosterate or GMS. It is an emulsifying agent and acts as surfactant. Emulsifiers like GMS are used to reduce the quantity of fats. GMS is used along with the fat. GMS is an excellent flour strengthener which enhances gluten, increases absorption and dispersion of water, thus ensuring more loaves per batch. It improves texture of bread by ensuring a fine and more uniform crumb structure. It keeps the bread fresh and soft. The next is milk. Milk is used in bread formations both in liquid or dry solid forms. 
while using liquid milk, the water content should be adjusted according to the formula. The moisture of the milk, when combined with the other ingredients, contributes to both toughness and tenderness in the products. The milk solids have binding effect on the flour protein, resulting in toughening effect. The lactose of milk helps to regulate color of crust, improve the flavor and retains the moisture. The next are the improvers. Besides the above ingredients, sometimes improvers like potassium bromate, potassium iodate, ascorbic acid and calcium peroxide are added at levels of parts per million. They add active oxygen to the dough, enhance the strength of gluten with better bread quality. Now let's discuss some preservatives. Preservatives like calcium propionate and acetic acid are used to inhibit the growth of fungi or mold. They improve the keeping quality of bread. Now let's move on to the methods for bread making. There are two procedures of bread making. First, straight dough process. Second, sponge and dough process. The straight dough process is the simple method for bread making. In this method, all the ingredients are mixed to develop the dough and allowed to ferment at 25 to 20 degrees Celsius. During fermentation, the dough is usually punched one or more times. After fermentation, it is divided into loaf-sized pieces, round, molded into the loaf shape and placed into the baking pan. In second method of sponge and dough process, part of the flour, two-third, part of the water and the yeast are mixed just enough to form a loose dough or sponge. The sponge is allowed to ferment for five hours, then it's combined with the rest of the ingredients and mixed to develop a dough. After being mixed, dough is given an intermediate proofing, flow time of about 20 to 30 minutes. It is divided, molded and proofed as in the straight dough procedure. Dear students, now let's move on to the steps in bread making. The bread is prepared from the four raw materials with flour, water, salt and yeast. The major steps in bread making are first, sieving. The flour is sieved to aerate the flour to remove coarse particles and other impurities and to make flour more homogeneous. Second, weighing. The next step is weighing of different ingredients as per recipe or formula. Minor ingredients have to be weighed more accurately. Third, mixing. Mixing is one of the important steps in bread making. The main purpose of mixing a dough is to make and develop the gluten. Total water absorption is not obtained until the gluten has been fully developed. Mechanical mixers are used for thorough incorporation of all the ingredients to develop the gluten and to make the dough more extensible. The straight dough should have a desirable temperature of 25 to 26 degrees Celsius and the sponge dough should have 23 to 25 degrees Celsius. The different stages of mixing are pickup stage, cleanup stage, development stage, final stage, let down stage and breakdown stage. Fourth, preparation of different solutions. Yeast is dispersed in a small part of water and the remaining part of water are used to dissolve sugar and other additives like oxidants, yeast foods, etc. Sequence of addition of ingredients also affects the dough characteristics. Shortening and salt are added after the cleanup stage to reduce the mixing time. Next is fermentation. Bread fermentation is an anaerobic process. Thus, little growth of yeast occurs during fermentation. The process of fermentation starts just after mixing and it increases during interproofing and final proofing. The most favorable temperature for action of yeast in bread dough is between 24 to 30 degrees Celsius and humidity about 70 to 75 percent. During fermentation, major change would be the increased volume of dough due to the production of gas, increased temperature and number of yeast cells and finally changed consistency of dough. The enzyme of yeast acts on the starch and sugars to form carbon dioxide gas. The evolution of this gas causes the dough to rise and conditions the dough to soften, light, elastic, extensible texture. Over fermented dough becomes soft and sticky and under fermented dough do not bake properly and the crumb is darkish and compact. Next is knockback. As fermentation proceeds, punching or remixing of the dough is done. Punching in between the fermentation increases gas retention capacity of the dough. 
the process of knockback equalizes dough temperature throughout the dough, reducing the retarding effect of excessive accumulation of carbon dioxide within the dough and introduces oxygen for the stimulation of yeast activity. The knockback also aids in the mechanical development of the gluten by stretching and folding action. Knockback is done when two-thirds of the normal fermentation time is over. Next is scaling or dividing. After fermentation, the dough is divided into individual pieces of predetermined uniform weight. The next is rounding. Each piece is rounded by hand or mechanically to give a ball shape. Rounding imparts a continuous surface skin that retains the gas and reduces the stickiness. During the scaling in pieces and rounding, most of the carbon dioxide formed in the first fermentation period gets squeezed out of the dough. The next is intermediate proof. The loss of gas during scaling and rounding is compensated by submitting the dough pieces to an extra fermentation period of 5 to 30 minutes, referred to as intermediate proof. It's done at a temperature of 27 to 30 degrees Celsius and 75% relative humidity for a time period of 5 to 30 minutes. The next is molding. The molding consists of sheeting, curling and sealing. Molding is done for the removal of extra gas formed by the process of fermentation at the time of intermediate proof. The next step is final proof. Final proofing is done at a temperature of 30 to 35 degrees Celsius at 85% relative humidity for 55 to 65 minutes. The function of final proofing are to relax the dough from the stress received during the fermentation operation, to facilitate production of gas to provide volume to the bread, to change tough gluten to a good mellow extensible character. The next is baking. At the end of the final proofing, the dough is baked for 15 to 45 minutes depending on the size of the dough pieces. Bread is baked at temperature of 245 degree to 250 degree Celsius for 30 minutes. The quality of dough determines the dough volume. The crust of the loaf and texture of the crumb occurs during the baking by gelatinization of starch which binds to the water. The purpose of baking is to transform unpalatable dough into a light, porous and readily digestible flavoured product. The duration of baking, humidity and temperature of the oven influences the quality of bread and vary depending upon size and shape of loaf, cooling, slicing and packaging. Well, that's all we have in today's programme. Hope you have really understood the topic. Thank you.